Hi everyone. Um, so another League of Ireland ground hop, this time in Dublin, the big schmuck. Um, my football day trip this time was to be a little different. Rather than head straight to the pub for a day of drinking and having a crack and finish it off with some football, this time I was to shake the day up a bit by including some more cultural and creative pursuits. Um, some might argue with some football high art in itself, but anyway. This time round I was to take a nice walking tour in Fibsborough, then head across the city to Darndale to take in some great art, and then to finish it off with some football at Richmond Park, the Stadium of Light, home of St. Patrick's Athletic. Not before I had a chat with local musician and keyboard wizard Tommy Keys. Art, music, storytelling, football and the odd pint. Who says life is boring? So in the morning I did a walking tour organised by My Streets Ireland. Um, what was different about this tour was that it was done by people who have lived on the streets of the capital. Homeless people giving tours and telling new unique stories. So I signed up and on the day I was lucky to get a tour off Eddie, who was shown a few of us around the streets of Fibsborough in North Dublin. I made a separate video of that and you can see the link below in the descriptions. Midday I crossed the city to Darndale to meet the one and only Emmanuel Godson an amazing north side artist and painter who creates work in a classical and realist style spruced up with a good healthy dose of modern day humour and satire. Emmanuel was kind enough to show me around his gallery and explain some of the ideas behind his art. I also had a great chat with Emmanuel about his work and some of his opinions on the modern day art scene. Again, I did a separate video on this, link in the descriptions. So that left me to cross the city again, this time over to the Dublin suburb of Inchicore to see the big game of the night between St. Patrick's Athletic and Dundalk. But before the game, I was lucky enough to have a quick chat with longtime Super Saints fan Tommy Keyes. Tommy is a singer-songwriter and in between a long stint as a top civil servant with the government, he was a member of the Irish rock band Sidewinder in the 70s. And after a break of 40 years, he is back in the profession he loves the most. Wannabe rock star and keyboard extraordinaire, writing songs, making albums and performing on stage with his new band. I first got into Tommy's music when I stumbled across his football tribute, Richmond Nights, and I was instantly hooked. I love Tommy's easy listening rock and pop style with a wonderful poetic style of writing, easy for the listener to follow and partake in. His albums are well worth checking out and I have the link to this interview with an album review I did of two of his four albums on Irish Life and, and his most recent offering, his fourth album, Temptation Once Again. Anyway, before I start the interview with Tommy, it was great to be back in Inchicore to see Pats, my favourite Dublin team. I've seen him six times and I've always enjoyed my time in Richmond Park or the Stadium of Light as they say up there. It's a great club with a small but dedicated band of loyal fans, a team that always like to get it on the deck and play and a club with no pretensions. Anyway, thanks to Tommy for the chat. Enjoy. Okay, I'm Tommy Key, singer, songwriter, recording artist, and given Rob's particular interest in football as well, um, I'm also very heavily involved in St. Patrick's Athletic Football Club, and that's where we are tonight doing this interview. Yeah, I, I was going like with the song Richmond Nights. I just, just the start of the song, like hand in hand, the boy man, they walk to the terrace shed, they find some space and take their place among the sea of red, so. That's a, that song is about three generations. Three, I mean, my dad first brought me here. We're in Richmond Park. My dad first brought me here when I was maybe 11 or 12. And then uh, I, brought, I brought my kids as soon as they were old enough to go and turn them into League of Ireland supporters as well. I don't have any grandchildren yet, but the song is kind of looking ahead 
to when um, you know and it's most likely to be my daughter because my, my eldest daughter is very heavily involved now in, in the club as well when she'll have somebody to bring along and it's the way the love of, of a football club and the love of supporting the club gets passed on yeah. from generation to generation it's a very very special thing yeah. and I think um, St. Pat's is I don't know like I've seen a few of the teams that done that. I think St. Pat's is slightly different to maybe Champ Gold and Bourne Bohemians it's more rooted in its area it's more it's family it's more community based I think. it's very rooted in the community here of Inchicore um, about 10 or 12 years ago when uh, no, 13 years ago when the new owner Gary Keller bought the club a lot of people were telling him that the sensible thing to do would be S- sell up the ground here, develop the ground here, move out to Tala, where, which was being developed at that stage, share the ground with Sean Crovers and that. And he very quickly realised that if you did that, you'd kill the club, because the club is absolutely rooted in the community here. Not just in Chicor, but the areas around it, West Dublin. It's, it's, it's of this place, and y- you, we, we couldn't move. So he's, he quickly said, no, the club is never moving from here. Yeah. And is, is it hard to get people out these days to follow the League of Ireland? It's very hard um, because any night of the week, I mean, we're here on a Friday night, we're playing Dundalk, who are the best team in the country, so this should be a massive match, but Liverpool are on television tonight, and we're definitely going to lose, we're going to lose supporters to that. Um, but the one thing that I will say is that there seems to be a bit of a resurgence, resurgence since the start of the season. We've had very good games for home matches. Um, Bohemians, our, our last away match was in Bohemians last week, they sold out. Uh, we sold out for our last match uh, uh, here against Shamrock Rovers, we turned had to turn people away. You know, now we're talking here about um, we're we're talking here about you know you know we're talking about four thousand three hundred four thousand four hundred. We're not talking about massive gates, but you know it's things are impro- things are improving. But I mean the the quality of the football is extremely good, and you can shout at the television as much as you like. It's not the same as shouting at players who can hear you <laughs> and referees who can hear you. Attendances are up this season. Is Definitely there, up, yeah. Is there a reason for that? Just all, it seems like uh, this season especially. Um, there was a lot of promo- like a lot of the clubs including ourselves did some very, very good promotion, you know, videos that went viral on YouTube and all that type of thing. This is our club. This is our community. 90 years of passion, 90 years on the terraces, from the Phoenix Park to Richmond Park, to Harold's Cross, to coming home again. 90 years of highs, of surprise, of heartbreak. Tears of joy. 90 years of being there. Maybe maybe people have a bit more money in their pocket. Um, the, the, I mean, the quality of the football is very good. I mean, a, a lot of the time what we're trying to do is get people to bring their friends to a match or two because we know that if they see how good, the, how good the product is, how good the entertainment is, that they will come again, you know. And since you've been following them, uh, what, what was the, hi- the highlight season for you? Um... Well, I've been following them 50 years, and, and we, 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 yeah, we, 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 we've, won, we've won the league six times in that period, but I think, well, I, I think nothing can really beat winning the FAI Cup in 2014 okay. in the right. Viva, because that, so was, that was the hoodoo that was hanging over this, this, this yeah. club, you know, seven cup final. We won the cup back in, I think, about 61, and after that we were in seven cup finals, uh, and we lost every single one of them. And like some of them were so close, like you know, the Sh- Shelburne, Shelburne went to a, Shelburne went to a replay. Derry went extra time, but we lost. We seven in a row. We yeah, lost, yeah. and there was this jinx hanging over us that we were, were never going to yeah, win the yeah. cup, even though we'd won six leagues in the same period. Yeah, yeah. And we beat Derry two 0 in the Aviva in 2014, and that was really really special. Did you drink for a week after that? Did you? Uh, <laughs> no, no, com- no, com- no, com- no comment on that. Okay. And there's been some special European nights here as well. Um, w- once we get beyond a certain stage in Europe, we have to move to Tal or whatever, and it's never as good. But when this place is packed, you know, for, for a European night, like we played Elfsborg from Sweden, yeah. and uh, we we were losing an aggregate, we were losing an aggregate with about five minutes to go, but we, we just needed a goal to win the way goals, and we got the goal, and then we got another goal, and that was just a massive, massive yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, cunt hero is, I mean, it's Paul McGrath. <laughs> yeah, every every gen, every generation every generation brings its bring, brings its its cult heroes. I mean, we have a lad at the club at the moment in in Birmingham, the captain. Mm-hmm. He's it's his testimonial year this year, his tenth successive season, and that's ten seasons always been in the first team. You rarely get that in League of Ireland mm-hmm. football now. But you know, people like Paul O'Sam, Eddie Gormley. Curtis Fleming yeah. and the older people older than me will talk about people like Ginger O'Rourke and Timber yeah. Cummins and these yeah. fellas back in the 50s so it's generation to generation yeah. and there's, kid, there's a kid here at the moment called Jamie Lennon mm-hmm. who you'll see him tonight a defensive okay. midfielder came on as a sub for the Ireland under 21s okay. uh, in Tallaght there last Sunday week he, you know, he, he's a star of the future. Chris Forrest goes back. Chris, Chris yes. has had a, di- yeah. Chris, Chris yeah. has had a disastrous uh, year. Uh, you know, he was doing really well at Peterborough, and then it kind of went off the boil. They sold him to Aberdeen, and that didn't work out at all. So he's home now. He hasn't played very much football in the last year, so he's only finding his feet again. When he finds his feet, you know, I mean, when he finds his feet, he's he's going to be massive. He was a, he was he was a, one of the legends here. Um, um, so what should I expect tonight in terms of the atmosphere? The atmosphere will be good. Dundalk, like we're on a bad roll because the, the team hasn't quite gelled yet with the, with, the, with the new signings. Dundalk are the best team in the country, notwithstanding that Sean Rovers might be top of the table at the moment. So we're very much up against it. Uh, if we get anything out of the game tonight, it would be that would be good. Okay. Um, then with, with regards to mus- music, Tommy. Um, yeah. See, like a few questions might, might as well be the music as well. Oh, yeah, so why not? Why not? <laughs> um, <coughs> so, how's the music going for you these days? The music is going very well. Um, I, I was working in a, in a completely different I, I uh, was away from music for nearly 40 years because in the 70s I had been in bands and so on, and was, I was the main songwriter in the bands I was in. And then I was away from music for nearly 40 years because I had a different career and it just didn't leave any room for, for, for music. But I retired from that. Mm-hmm in 2015 and went straight into the studio and recorded stuff, uh, started you know, doing albums, getting back gigging, looking around for singer-songwriter sessions where I'd have the, I'm not really interested in just kind of going into pubs to play covers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was, do your own song. I do my, I do my own stuff. And I, I, I th- there are, particularly around Dublin, there are places where you can go and play your own material. And I ended up landing on my feet really because I got involved. There's a pub in Dublin called Darkie Kelly's which has a singer-songwriter night on Tuesdays. And I started playing that, and then they asked me to host it, and then they asked me to run it. So I run that session now, and every Tuesday night I get to do quite a few original songs, and we usually have nine or ten other singer-songwriters who all perform, and then we have a big jam at the end. Oh, yeah, and I do a thing then in the same place. An idea came up with myself last year called the Sunday Song Brunch, where twice a month we have a half twelve until three o'clock session on a Sunday where we do much the, much the same thing. And the nice thing about that is that our musicians, because during the day, musicians who have young kids and the kids have maybe never seen Daddy or Mammy play, yeah. but you know they can they can bring them in and so on. So that's that's nice as well. So I'm very I'm very content. Fourth album, Temptation, once again came out in November, has done really well, got really nice reviews okay. for it, getting a good bit of radio play. I'm never going to make money out of this, um, but it doesn't matter. I just want my original songs. But you get your out own there. audience online. I think. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Does it, um, does it. Does the football feed off it? Like when you're standing on the terraces in a cold, wet, does that inspiration hit you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but 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 but, but, but I, I, the first thing I is yeah, yeah, the first thing is I, I I look I look I look around the ground uh, as you will do this evening, and uh, <laughs> behind each goal I see a big billboard Tommy Keys that 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 that, 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 that uh, I, I I decided I was going to put a little bit of money into promotion, so I said if I'm going to put a bit of money into promotion, St. Pat's might as well have it. So so every time that a uh, soccer republic is on or whatever it's called now. If, if, they're sh- if they're showing any goals from Richmond Park, there's a quick little <laughs> subliminal ad that catches everybody for Tommy Keys, which is good, you know. <laughs> is good. Which would be better, like the buzz from a live performance you're playing in front of people, or a goal tonight? Like, is there? <laughs> uh, they're both they're both brilliant. How how could how, how could that's 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 like saying you know you can only keep one of your kids. Which 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 which, which ones will you give up? Couldn't 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 really choose between those. Yeah. Is there much of a difference between? Like you said, you were, or you were with was a sidewinder back in the day. The seventies, yeah, 70s. yeah. The uh, bi- is, there, is there much of a difference between then and these times? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, for big difference personally because I was just the keyboard player in the band. I was never the front man. Yeah, okay. Now it's me. I'm Tommy Keys. Okay. I sometimes play with a band, but but it would be the band I've put together, you know, myself uh, uh, and so on. So it, it, it is different. Um, and the other big difference is now 
Um, and that's why I say I feel very sorry for young musicians now. In those days, you could actually make money doing it. You know, the, yeah. the, the gigs are all paid. There were big crowds and all that type of thing. Um, if you brought out an album or a single or that, people would buy it. Now, um, the, the venues generally don't don't pay or pay very, very little and everybody downloads the money, uh, their, their albums and singles use or, or streams them or whatever. You know, if you can hear everything you want on Spotify, why are you going to buy things? And yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. So, so you know, in terms of it being a money-making proposition, now it's very difficult. But you're more clear to your audience, I think. Yeah. YouTube and social media, you can you, you can target. To your yes, audience, absolutely. So you can you, you can you can target in that way. Okay, uh, Tommy. Just uh, with regards to tonight's game, any any predictions on the game? Um, uh, my head says that we will lose, and my heart says that uh, says a one-all draw. Yeah. I think they lost in the cup there. We played them in the League Cup on Monday, a uh, 2-1 defeat, yeah. 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 But that was but the sec- second team, maybe. <laughs> well, it was, you know, both teams both teams uh, were, were under strength for, for the game, you know. Our striker, we've only scored, our, our problem this season is scoring goals, and our striker, has own, our striker, Mikey Drennan, is the only player who has scored uh, so far this season, and unfortunately he got sent off against Bohemians last week so okay. he's suspended so that doesn't help. Okay. Gary Shaw whom you may know I think he might be from yeah. your part of the world Gary is playing up front ok so it might be a 1 nil then well, an hour 1 nil I'd, I'd take that now minute, maybe. I'd, I'd take that now ok thanks very okay, much thanks, thanks, thanks very much, much. Thank yeah. you very much.